Everyone, welcome to this evening's webinar on the initiation program and a brief update on the season. Uh, we are uh, pleased to have Robin Deach with us tonight to conduct the webinar. Just as a little bit of an introduction, my name is Bill Annis. I'm an associate director with BC Hockey. And one of the jobs I have over the course of this season is to present a series of webinars to our members. Uh, this whole project called Enhanced Services is a project that stems out of our annual meeting where we simply ask the question, how could we possibly make associations better? One of the responses they came back with was, you could do professional development type initiatives with our people. So in hearing that, we've constructed a series of what will end up being about 20 webinars over the course of the winter. And uh, this is our seventh one. They're designed for different elements of hockey. We've done a couple for officiating. We've done a couple for presidents. Um, this is the second one that we've done in the uh, so-called coaching realm, and this one specific to those that uh, have an effect on uh, entry-level players. I'll turn the proceedings over to Robin, uh, but just by way of introduction, Robin is a longtime instructor of both initiation and coaching programs with BC Hockey and certainly has a history of being involved with entry-level players, and I think has a, a real passion for that end of the game. Um, he has uh, uh, constructed a presentation tonight for you, and then we will finish off with a few things after Robin is finished. But in saying that, Robin, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedule to present this evening. And uh, good luck, and uh, uh, I look forward to your address. Robin? All right. Thank you, Michael, Bill. Uh, thank you all for taking your time out for a, a brief discussion. Um, when, when approached about this, I kind of giggled because they said, well, you got about 30 minutes, and I'm going, wow, uh, 30 minutes to talk about the initiation program is, uh, will hardly do it benefit. So what I, what I did in lieu of that was created kind of a little PowerPoint presentation for you to, to view other than uh, myself and, and some of the points uh, I started off with, who, who are the initiation participants, and then sort of roll into uh, practice planning and how I develop what we call as progressions for uh, our, our four to six-year-olds uh, with that. And, so as I say, welcome. I, I, I've been involved for over 30 years. Most of it, most of those years, have been involved with the initiation uh, kids, and I've kind of stumbled across a, a means of showing them the hockey. Um, it, it basically comes down to an environment that we're, we're we're trying to create for the kids. We're teaching them how to be involved in a learning environment and it can be a multitude of various things so as the first slide says is how a player gets their first taste of hockey is crucial uh, they, they're there to have fun not have drills pounded into them sort of thing um, and that can be quite a challenge because you have a very ra large range of skill out there some that can't skate and others who have very adapt at doing it uh, and, and the trick is, is to involve everyone else. To me, it's a progressive learn to play teaching curriculum. Players learn through participating in practice drills with informal modified games. I, I try to modify a lot of stuff. Uh, what I do use is the Hockey Canada IP manual and, and use that as a starting point. And I encourage other coaches that I'm working with to use that as a as a base to start. Most have had some sort of a hockey background, but when you get out there with five-year-olds, um, what you remember you doing last is far from what their expectations are sort of thing. Um, 
fun drills, you know, doing the old dry drills around the cone and whatnot, just including a high five, you know, lots of encouragement, um, letting them know what you're seeing is very good. And just lots of encouragement, lots of smiles, getting to know the kids. What more can I say? It's all about the fun. For the coaches, it can be a huge challenge, and I'm sure all of you, now that we're into December, can remember back in September, particularly if it's your first time on the ice with the kids, and, and you're going, wow, what am I going to do with these kids? And then they get out there, and, and then the panic settles in. Um, you've gotten through those phases now, and hats off to you for doing that. The skills that we're teaching are, are very basic skills, just from being able to move. Um, you know, gliding on one foot, gliding on two feet. The progressions are extremely slow in a lot of kids. And it, it's about giving them the courage to try the next stage, basically. Even lifting a foot off the ice can be very fearful. One of the things I've noticed lately in a lot of the kids is their mobility isn't what it used to be. Kids are different nowadays. They have different things they're doing. Uh, they're not outside climbing trees like many of us used to do. And in the games changing, as, as we know, we're now entering the world of a cross ice hockey game and, and how that's going to progress the kids into the full ice. Uh, we're, we're seeing bumper pads come onto the ice. We're seeing modified nets. Um, it, it's an adult game that we've now modified very well down to a smaller child, a small person and still trying to maintain a huge fun bit to it. So just a little bit on physical literacy here. Um, what is it? Why have it? And how does it fit into hockey? So it's about awareness, selections and movements. Um, and that's what I talk about a lot with, with coaches with the IP program. It, it's not necessarily skill-based, it's movement-based. And we're asking these kids to move in, in certain directions, in certain ways that they've never moved before. Just even having their skates go one way and trying to twist at the waist sort of thing. Uh, skating up the ice, catching a ball. Um, it's not there. It, it's something that they don't do every day. And we get them twice a week for an hour sort of thing. And we're really trying to encourage them to step outside their world where it's, it's nice and comfortable and they're confident into a world where they're standing on an eighth inch piece of steel and we're asking them to move. Um, I'm sure all of you have had somewhere, you know, basically just getting them to walk across the ice is a huge achievement for the child. And then soon after that, they, they're gaining the confidence and they're able yeah. to do a lot more. Um, and, we, and we just trying to encourage, I, I'm always trying to encourage the kids to, to be moving in a way that we would like them to move. It, it, it isn't gonna happen overnight. And, I, and I'm always reminding coaches that it, it, they're on a journey and the journey, as we know, you know, 10,000 reps sort of thing, 10,000 hours. So we got them just for a minute little bit of their, of their initial journey. And, and that's why the emphasis is so important on having fun. And if they're having fun, uh, they're not necessarily thinking about what their body's doing. They're just doing it sort of thing. And pretty exciting to, to see that. Um, movement vocabulary. Uh, it's really, really important that we're using terminologies that are hockey terminologies and they get used to it. So when they move from coach to coach, it, it's not a new vocabulary for them. Uh, when we're talking about how we want the kids to move. Um, it, it's something associations can look at trying to get a consistency through the, the different levels with it. Um, and again, we're always pushing on our, in our coaching clinics about progressively, it's easy to progress a 10 year old as compared to a five year old. What is the progressions? Um, sometimes it's just lifting a foot off the ice. Sometimes it's a hop. Uh, falling down, getting up. And, and I try to do these things in different ways once we've got the kids moving in um, 
uh, moving, then we're trying to encourage them to to step outside their comfort zone and always letting them know that, you know, what do you do when you fall down? You just get back up and, and give it another try. And if anything, they need the more encouragement when they do fall down to know that that's okay. Um, when, what do we got here? The goal is to have some fun while playing hockey, encouraging the physical activity. Again, it's all about learning how to learn. And, and in, in five and six year olds, it, it's the environment. And if the environment's a nice, happy environment, I'm bringing out my chickens, I'm bringing out parachutes, uh, 12 foot parachutes that we just basically fluff sort of thing. And, and to me, that's balance and agility. We're trying to toss balls off and catch them and whatnot. And, and the kids forget about, they're actually standing on skates most of the time. Um, as you're walking through the season, you're, you're creating different movements and you're refining some of the ones that they've learned. How far can they, as I call, drift down the ice and they're gliding on their skates in one foot. Obviously working on both sides so that th there's a balance in the development. Um, and, and it's when you get to that weak side of the child where they're not used to it, if they're predominantly stronger on the right side, now you're asking to do something on the left side. It's, it's extremely unnatural for them, um, you know, and, and to encourage that rather than using lefts and rights, we've gone to a, a model where we're, we're saying the water bottle side, and that way we can ensure that the kids are trying to develop both sides sort of thing, whether it be turns or stops or lifting a foot up or pivoting in a certain direction sort of thing. It gives them a sense of which direction are you looking for them to do rather than just telling them to go up the ice. And if I've got 10 kids going up the ice and I say, turn to the right, five of them are going to the right, five are going to the left. And it works. I find it works a lot better. How do you develop the ice, the IP practice plan? Again, start from something that's, that's proven, something that's accepted internationally the hockey canada binders there's a world of uh, other resources out there but i try to encourage the resources that are given to coaches in clinics that it, it's a great way to start as a basis um i think we're now up to about less than 18 and i literally try to walk through page by page in sequence that it's all been figured out for you we call it the seasonal plan um it, it, it takes a little bit of the pressure off coach on on what to come up with and how often do you come up with it so that there is development and refinement as well as um, introducing new movements which can build and that's where we get into the progressions off of something that they've they've created um, I do we do a lot of station work. And I'm always encouraging the, the coaches just to get down on the ice and draw on the ice. Um, I use these markers. They're nice to kids. They're, they're, they're a scented marker. It, it's always a nice little thing to just to start off with, well, what flavor are we using today sort of thing. It kind of breaks the ice for the kids, and we giggle and we laugh about it. And I draw it up for them. The kids these days are, are very much visual. Uh, to stand there and to speak more than eight seconds, you've lost them. So... Everything is broken down into bits, and then we we add it all together, whether it's just starting off down and around one cone sort of thing, and then progressively moving into two cones, three cones, uh, trying to keep patterns the same so that there's there's consistency. They, they feel comfortable knowing. Most kids want to know, how do I go from A to B before they're they're realizing what to do on their journey from A to B. So I, I, we try to keep patterns down so that we're doing tight turns and stop practices. It, it's off the same cones. The kids are very comfortable with it. They know where to go, and then they can put more of their effort into actually the movement that we're trying to get them to achieve or progress along. And, and it's very simple progressions at this point. Just just having your getting off the inside edges of the skates and being able to skate. Uh, a lot of the time we're we're doing things in a very short area, um, 12 feet basically, uh, so that the, the kids aren't getting terribly tired. They have ample time to, to have a rest. I always usually have a coach down there and they're chatting it up and giving some feedback and it's, 
it, it's very low key type of feedback. It's it's not anything to be too stressful. Um, one of the things I like to do with the kids just to help keep their attention is I do make them accountable. We let the kids know that when the child in front of them, the player in front of them goes around the first cone, it's their turn. And this then frees us up co as coaches to be in, within the drill uh, or the, move, the the pattern that we're skating to, to, to just encourage the kids a lot. And we find that, the, you know, when the kids have now have to watch each other to see when it's their turn to go, there's less they're they're not misbehaving in line or daydreaming or whatever the case is. They're focused. They're watching the other kids in the drills, um, and and it, and it works. It really does work. The kids, I think, enjoy being accountable. Um, so again, who are we coaching? You, you need a real good reality check that the, it is entry level. It is very much beginning stages. Um, I've done a couple of researches on the on the type of kids we're getting these days or the, the way the kids are coming up in the world and we talk about the Y generation. I just finished another one on the on the Z generation, which is the up and coming generation. And in reality, uh they're 180 degrees different, where some like to be doing things by themselves. This newer generation does like doing things within groups. Uh, very much visual. I've I've almost completely gone over to using an iPad on the ice now. If I'm trying to show something, I show them a video. I show them the drill, and it's a, an animated drill, and they really focus on that rather than a coach standing on a board drawing something up or even on the ice drawing something up. Um, I'm using a, a, a video for correction. If I'm asking the kids to be doing you know, laterals or something in hockey stance. They they really think they are in hockey stance. And then when I show them, they go, oh. And, and then they can feel what it feels like to be a little lower sort of thing. And again, we're trying to work on muscle memory. But if they're not in the right spot, then their their body's getting the wrong read on it. So I found that using vis or the visual, the videos is very good. Uh, they like to giggle at themselves, see each other, and then compare themselves to the next time they do it. And it seems to go very well with the kids. Again, it's, it's keeping up with the technology that the kids are being brought up in, which is quite exciting for them. Uh, one of the things I've really gone to over the, the last couple of years is giving, rather than having showing up with, you know, six, seven drills to do, I'm giving the kids the opportunity to, to figure it out on their own uh, with a little bit of encouragement and some you know hot tips as I call them but I'm really letting them get their their reps in uh to do it and, and to figure out how to do it better and I'm always encouraging well if that didn't work try something different and if that works build off of that and and, and they do a very good job at it um I, I'm quite impressed on how um dedicated some of the kids are and trying to be as good as they can be I'm always encouraging them to be as good as they can be and not to worry about not being good, that that's okay. We're, we'll get there sort of thing. And um, they really do respond that way without the pressure, um, allowing them just to work it out, you know, give them six, seven, eight, nine reps at on, on tight turns. And, and they do, you can see the focus in them that they are trying hard to, to get it sort of thing. And if I'm more concerned about my schedule and trying to get through all the drills that I planned, then I'm not giving them the time that they need to, to feel comfortable with something. Um, and, and they really, they like it. Uh, this one, don't take it wrong. Um, I, I appreciate all the coaches out there that are stepping up to help out. But in some cases, a lot of some of the coaches that we're dealing with have no background in the game and, and they're there for the kids and they're there sometimes because nobody else will, they need the support. Uh, they need to know how to, where to start, where to go to sort of thing. Um, and not to have too high expectations. Uh, they forget what it was like when they first started. And, and quite honest, when they, when we first started playing the game, it was taught to us totally different. It was through trial and error. Um, the practices weren't as structured 
necessarily on a skill based as they are nowadays. And we, we do eventually get into the competition. So I spend time with the coaches that I'm working with. And we not only talk about the present, but we talk about where we're going to go once we feel the kids are starting to feel comfortable with what they're doing or even bored. Okay, so w w what could we do? And, and I always try to encourage them to have a, a plan B. If plan A didn't work for whatever reason, we, uh, in the lower mainland, we've had a week of rain. Kids have been shut in. You know, they're, they're not, they're rambunctious or something. Then we'll just play some games and, and we'll use their energy for a positive thing and then kind of just wear them down a little bit and then you get their focus back again to, uh, to do it. But really, you know, the, the the Hockey Canada binders are very good. I've been using them for years. Uh, it's a starting point. From there, you can modify things. Um, I try not to move groups as a group through the progressions. Uh, you get to know the kids. You know where the kids are at. And each one, as they come to the front of the line, I may be asking them to do something different. Um some of the kids that may have their turns down really good, I'm trying to, to adjust the turn into more of a slalom turn. Um, or we're, we're working on inside, outside edges. And it's just done on the fly. It's not necessarily the whole group where, where some of the ones will not feel confident doing it. Again, it's an individual uh, le level that I try not to push them too far beyond their comfort level um, so that they, there's a little bit of challenge to it yet and um, for me it's been working and from what I've heard from other coaches they they see the the value in that uh, borrow modified plans uh, there's a multitude of them out there um, you know you've got your gurus in your association reach out to them I would be hoping that um, they're reaching out to you asking how things are going uh, here's some different things. The one on the left is the drill hub, which is free for everybody. The binders in the middle. And then on the right hand side, it's just a basic plan uh, that we may use. It's divided the ice up into five sections. <clears throat> Most of the groups we're working on, we've got 40 kids on the ice. So it's, it's next to impossible. I use the old uh, cliche, a divide and conquer where we get the kids down to groups of five, where you can spend some quality time with it. Um, the clients, as I call them, are the parents in the stand. And they're, and they're very much appreciate you spending moments throughout the practice talking to each of their, or to their kids. And, uh, you know, they like to see the individual one-on-one -on -one encouragement sort of thing, uh, rather than, you know, teachings. It's just about the encouragement and, and having fun out there. Um, I can't emphasize enough to be prepared. Uh, I still take two, two and a half hours to plan an hour's practice. So it's a lot of hours and I, you know, and I try to use as much as what's produced as already, why invent, reinvent the wheel sort of thing. There, there's awesome things. And, and when you start pondering, sometimes you get out of the level that you're actually trying to coach and it gets to be too difficult for the kids. And then they, they kind of stop trying to do things for you on the ice. So be very aware of, of the capabilities of the kids. And at the same time, you don't want them to be too long in the level that they are achieving. Um, take them out of that comfort zone, encourage them to, you know, to do something different sort of thing. Um, thinking outside the box, I've been known this for years. Uh, I work on edges on the kids and on power at five years of age. We have tugs of war. We get a rope out. We use a tug of war. Um, and at first, they're all lighting up the wrong way. You say go, and the team that gets the most tension on the rope first pulls down the other team. And then, oh, hot tip time. What if we stood sideways and used our edges on our skates? And then we actually start getting them to cooperate together where they're now pulling and they're talking to each other. Again, communication is a big thing down the line. Uh, 
but we're not saying that. We're just trying to say, well, if everybody pulls at once, how do you do that? You know, and then we start hearing the heave ho sort of thing. Uh, picture the uh, the parachute. That's the type of parachute I use, and it and it's fun for the kids squatting up, getting down, uh, eventually asking a child just to to scoot underneath it before it gets trapped before they get trapped by the parachute. And tons of giggling going on. They're they're working harder than you could ever get to do. Uh, the buckets. I use that for stride development for the younger kids. One child sitting on the bucket, and the other one just pushing them, and it's kind of a relay race. Um, and they soon realize that the inside edges towing out is very important. Sometimes I don't even say anything. They discover it themselves. And, and you could just see the sparkle in the eyes when the lights come on. <clears throat> I use bubbles for balance and agility, especially with the kids that aren't moving too well. They all love bubbles. Uh, throw some bubbles out in the air and watch the kids try to break them. And they're zigging and they're zagging. And they've completely forgotten that they're on skates. And, and they're just having a great time. And they're colliding with each other. Um, we were dealing with hula hoop kids. They're brought up in, a, in an age where they're very much respecting each other's space. And yet in hockey, we know we want the kids to invade each other's space and it, it can be quite the challenge. And, and also just having somebody bump into you. Uh, some kids just don't like it at all or, or some are scared of the contact. And I find it a nice comforting way to, to come up with games. I do um, musical pucks much like musical chairs, six kids, six pucks, take a puck out each time. And eventually you have three kids go, or six kids going for three pucks and, and they're starting to compete for it. And, you know, I try not to look in the stands at the parents when the kids are all colliding over the top of a face-off dot. I use rings a lot more nowadays. <clears throat> I used to use them originally just for teaching checking. I'm now starting to use them to teach the movement of puck handling and stick handling. Uh, one, because they don't go too far once they've gone. Uh, kids tend to tend, spend more time chasing a puck when they're doing their trying to work on uh, puck handling. Well, essentially, what are we teaching them? We're trying to teach them a movement. A the object is kind of irrelevant. The sticks are upside down. They got their stick on it, but they're still moving their arms in the correct manner. They can go sideways. They're not focused on trying to maintain the puck at this point or the tennis ball or whatever we might be using. And I found with a ring that the sense of achievement is there immediately because they can retain the ring. And then they can, you, we can push that movement a little bit further. Um, I'm using it for checking now. I, I, you know, what better way to take a stick out of a, a ring is, is to give it a little pop, a stick lift. And uh, the, the kids catch on really quick. And then when we start using a puck, you immediately see the results of, of practicing with the rings that their their first thing to do rather than going in what I call it's a whack attack, uh, they're no longer doing that. They're going in, they're getting in tight, hands in front of the person they're trying to steal the ring for, or the puck from, and they're lifting each other's sticks. And it, it's just a nice progression. And you don't normally have to say anything if you work with the rings enough. Tennis balls are nice. Um, I'm known for my rubber chickens. We play a lot of tag games with rubber chickens, throwing around. I'm now getting kids to uh, skate up and down the ice, just passing a ball back and forth. Again, I'm trying to get a disconnect between the focus of their feet and, and trying to create some agility by just playing catch with the ball uh, going across the ice, even if one's going backwards. They, they forget they're going backwards because they're intent on catching the on the ball. I'm very big, as I say, on figuring it out, giving them the time just to work it out and then sometimes all I'm doing is just encouraging them, uh, you know, telling them what the the effort I, I really like that they're trying to get it and and giving them the, the sense that I have noticed where they've gone from what they did in last practice. And now they're trying something else. Uh, they, they, they do like to know that you're watching, you notice them. Um, again, just just some videos. Uh, lots of things available on app stores to help you out uh, or the um, whatever platform you're working it out. But really try to give them the time to, to work it out. So now we move into progressions. Progressions are, are very much hidden for me. Um, I, I, I tried to hide the progressions, you know, where we're going from C cuts to uh, thrusting, heel thrusts, uh, working on laterals and going into crossovers. 
I always try to like to work the kids on the cross or the laterals first, just up and over, going straight down the line, and then move them on to some uh, lateral or uh, crossovers. The, the sense of, for the child for success is there. Uh, also being very aware that their, their, their motor skill development tends to be a little lower than what it was in the past. So we're trying to encourage them to, again, get outside that comfort box. Uh, progressions are done, again, just using rings, moving into a puck, um, and then adding some sort of another person sort of thing. As we know it, as we're talking about skills, moving into individual tactics, where now you're using a couple of, of skills together. Um, I'm finding that the more skills you can combine in a drill as compared to more people, the kids are comfortable with it. Um, short discussion, as I say, keep your progressions within reason for the kids. Um, allow them to enjoy themselves. And please play lots of games. British Bulldogs, still a good one to, to get over the fear of contact. Um, I play a game called uh, Man Overboard where they have to fall down and on a periscope, they put their leg up. Uh, on a shark, they got to go to the boards. Man Overboard, they go to a circle. They get used to where the ice is and what the markings are. Um, I could go on for hours on this one, but I won't. Perfect. So, Thank you very much, Robin. Is that, is that everything for you? That That's what I would like to present right now, is it everything? Of course not. <laughs> not. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Bill real quick. He's got a couple of things he wants to do just to, to wrap us up here. And um, again, thanks very much, Robin, for all that. All right. And I just wanted to finish off with um, um, a couple of things that I have just found of extreme interest here in the last uh, little bit. And I thought you would be interested as well. The first one I've... Uh, uh, got on the screen here, and it's a reference to two presentations, and they're both on YouTube. If you type in that title, you will get them. And I know the struggle that you have with bystanders, whether they're parents or parents' entourage and families, that you have a hard time convincing what the system is all about and what the initiation program is intended to do and that they believe it should be done in a different fashion. And if you're looking for resources that can help you sell this product, um, two have just come um, on, the, uh, on the YouTube site that are outstanding presentations from a conference. The first one is uh, by Bob Caldwell. Bob Caldwell is from Hockey Manitoba and is and has been for a long time their initiation person and mentorship person. And um, he deals with the concept of the initiation program and uh, why we're doing what we're doing. And so if you go on either the Hockey Manitoba website or simply on YouTube, that presentation is outstanding. The second one is if you want to convince someone who sees their son or daughter as being a, a potential outstanding player, Dr. Stephen Norris has what I think is a, um, again an outstanding presentation on where leading hockey nations and our program should be going and why it should be going there. Again, it deals with uh, long-term player development and it deals, I guess, a little bit with the concept of the initiation program. This is a, a little bit of a long one. It's about an hour and a half long, uh, but the information in it and the, uh, uh, the way that it's presented is absolutely outstanding. Again, you can access it through Hockey Manitoba's website or simply type in the title to um, um, YouTube 
and you can get a hold of that one. Um, I'd just like to show you something else, and this is our website. We tape all these presentations. So if you go on, our, on the website to Enhanced Services, and on the Enhanced Services webpage to Webinars, um, these are all the previous webinars that you can watch, and this one will be posted in the next couple of days for anyone to watch. So if there's other people that need this information, if you want to forward it to them, it is on our website or will be very shortly and is uh, an excellent resource. So the last thing that I have to do uh, certainly is to thank Robin for his input this evening. And uh, thank you for a very busy clinic season, Robin, and, uh, and all your work with uh, entry-level players and the, the coaches and instructors that uh, choose to work at that level. We certainly uh, love your commitment. <laughs>